Okay, in this video, we're going to cover some chapter 19 questions having to do with thermodynamics and Gibbs free energy and also some entropy. So let's jump right into it. The first one, for a certain reaction, delta G is 7.9 kilojoules per mole. What is the equilibrium constant at 103 Celsius? So we have an equation for this. And that equation is delta G equals negative RT natural log of K. Cool. So now we know delta G and we want to have it in joules, not kilojoules per mole. So it's going to be 7,900 joules equals negative 8.314 because we're doing our joules per Kelvin mole uh, ideal gas constant. And then 103 Celsius is going to be 103 plus 273 Kelvin times the natural log of K. And we can solve for the natural log of K, or we can solve for K, which is the equilibrium constant, by doing some algebra. So our expression for K, once we divide both sides by negative RT, and then take E to that expression, would be E to the negative 7,900 divided by 8.314 times the temperature, which is going to be 376, 376. And remember, put parentheses in the denominator like this. Otherwise, it'll put the 376, or it meaning the calculator, will place 376 in the numerator of this expression. So this is the answer expression, which gives you the answer of 0 0.07. Nine, nine. Okay, moving on to the next one. Calculate delta G for the following reaction. Now with delta G, with delta S, and with delta E. So that's Gibbs free energy, entropy, and enthalpy. If we have a reaction, we can simply find the enthalpy or entropy or Gibbs of the entire reaction by doing the products minus the reactants. In this case, we're not given two of the products or one of the reactants and one of the products, the solid carbon and the solid, solid iron. Now, both of those are in their solid state, meaning that's their um, standard form. So the Gibbs energy of formation is actually zero for these because they're in their standard form. So let's solve for this and we, have, we can get rid of the 4Fe and the 3C because those, those expressions equal zero. So we're going to have the products, which is three times the Gibbs free energy for CO2, which is negative 394.4 minus, that's all the products because there's only one product that applies that has a non-zero Gibbs free energy. Then the reactants, which is going to be two times negative 742.2. And we can solve for this expression. And without even solving for it, we can tell, is this reaction going to be spontaneous. So if delta G is less than zero, it's going to be spontaneous. If delta G is greater than zero, it's going to be non-spontaneous and requires energy for the reaction to occur. So you're going to have a around, let's say 700, a negative 700 minus a negative 1400 or so, meaning plus 1400. So it's going to be a positive delta G, which will mean that the reaction is non-spontaneous. So the answer is, and we can't say kilojoules per mole because our expression or our equation, our reaction, has coefficients that are greater than one. So we can't say kilojoule per mole of anything. If we want to say kilojoules per mole of Fe2O3, we would simply divide this by two. All right, moving on. So we have a reaction that A leads to B, and we have delta A. H, delta S, and we're looking for delta G at a certain temperature. And we have an equation given for this, which is the Gibbs free energy equation. So we can solve for that. Delta G equals delta H. Now H is in kilojoules, S is in joules. Therefore, we got to convert delta H into joules. So negative 221, negative 21.8 times 10 to the third, that would be the joules, minus T delta S. So they give us the temperature in Kelvin. And then delta S is negative 36. So we can solve for that. And delta G is equal to 7.22 times 10 to the third. 
All right, moving on to the next one. Calculate delta S for the following reactions. Now, same equation before, but now we have the values for delta S and we can do products minus reactants. So four times your iron, which is 27.3 plus three times your CO2, which is 213.7. And that's gonna be all of the products now minus all of the reactants. So that's gonna be two times 87.4 plus three times 5.7. And this makes sense because if you're looking at the ent or entropies, now entropy, even if a compound or atom or element is in its standard state, it still has entropy. Disorder of the molecules is always going to be entropy. But the entropy is going to be greatly minimized if you have a solid, especially in its standard form, like you do for carbon and iron that are just monatomic solids. And you can see their entropy is pretty low, 27 joules and 5.7 joules. Meanwhile, you have solids that, or anything else, solids that are uh, compounds, meaning the iron oxide, it's up to 87. And then you have anything that's not a solid, meaning a liquid or a gas, the entropy increases greatly. And it increases with molecular size, because the larger the atom, the more electron movement there is, and overall, the more energetic disorder there is. So um, you can see that trend going on in, these, in this chart as well. So to answer our question for the entropy, once we plug this in the calculator, we get 558.4 joules per Kelvin. Joules per Kelvin. We can't even say joules per Kelvin per mole, just joules per Kelvin. Okay, moving on to the next one. What is delta G in this following reaction? I'm not gonna do this one. Moving on to the next one, calculate the vapor pressure for mercury at 65 degrees Celsius. So we have the equation, the chemical reaction given for vaporization, which is the liquid to the gas form. We also have delta H, delta S, and we have a temperature. So even if this seems kind of weird and you don't really know where to go from this, you have those three values, which you can solve for Delta G like we did before. So Delta G is going to equal Delta H minus T Delta S. And we can solve for that. And again, just like we did before, Delta H is usually going to be given in kilojoules. So we need to turn that into joules. So it'd be 61.32 times 10 to the third minus the temperature which is gonna be 65 plus 273 times delta S, which is 98.83. And we can solve for this and get 27.92 kilojoules. All right, so the next part of this is to calculate the vapor pressure. Now, to calculate pressure, where do you really go? How do you really go from delta G to pressure? Another equation we know and which we use so far was delta G equals negative R, negative RT natural log of K. Now we can solve for K. We have the temperature and we have Gibbs free energy. Now what would K give us? K would give us the equilibrium expression and or the equilibrium constant. The expression for this constant by judging by this equation is just going to be the concentration of mercury, gas, because liquids are not in solution. They don't, they're not either gas or aqueous. Pure liquids, they cannot have an equilibrium or not expressed in the equilibrium expression. So what we can do is we can assume that K, since it equals only the vaporized or the pressure or the concentration of the vaporized mercury, we can say it equals the pressure and we can solve for K. So we do 27.92 equals negative 8.314 times your temperature, which is 65, which is 65 plus 273 times natural log of K. Then we can solve for natural log of K and solve for K. And I'll just write the expression for that. E to the negative 27. 0.92 times 10 to the third. And remember, put a times 10 to the third there divided by 
8.314 times, and what's 65 plus 273? That would equal 338. And we do e to the negative that, and that will give us our answer, which should be 4.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, that's it for this video. And feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or if you see any typos. And feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.